five years, six months, and 29 days ago, I sat in the emergency room of the Ohio State University Medical Center. I was in a bad place. At this point in my life, I'd lost my will to live. I was suicidal. As you can imagine, I was afraid. That familiar smell of hospital disinfectants started to settle in. Then the sound of emergency pages and stretchers and shuffling in the hallway outside my door. The fluorescent lighting. And finally, the wall I'd been staring at became my newest enemy, and I thought, I'm trapped here. This is going to be my new home. As afraid as I was, I was more afraid of people finding out what was happening to me. And that was because I spent the better part of two years telling everyone that I was fine. I told my friends, I told my classmates, I told my coworkers, I even told my family, my parents. If they asked, how are you? I said, I'm fine. But the truth is I was not fine. I was coming apart at the seams, falling to rock bottom. And at this point, a lot of people have asked me, what happened to you that got you to that place, to your rock bottom? Assuming something tragic must have happened to me. And the truth is, nothing happened. In relative terms, I was normal. I had a good family. I had good friends. I played sports. I'd made it to college. From the outside, everything looked just fine. But what happened over time is I realized I had all this relative success out of fear. I was afraid of being a bad son. I was afraid of failing. I was afraid I'd never get out of my hometown and become something more. And when you live your life out of fear this way, eventually there comes a point that you simply start living through other people's standards and expectations and none of your own. And that's when I started to fall to rock bottom. So here I am in the emergency room, and there's something in two years I'd yet to try to get better, and that was to be vulnerable. I looked at the doctor and said, I'm not okay. I need help. And finally, I permitted myself to get help. I permitted myself to get better by being vulnerable. I equate this process to learning how to swim because by being vulnerable in a moment like this, it's almost like throwing yourself into the deep end. You thrash, you fight, and before you know it, you start to paddle. You start to kick your legs. You start to tread water. And before you know it, you start to swim. What's funny about this metaphor is that at that time, I literally did not know how to swim. I was petrified of water. So a few years have passed from that moment in the hospital. I'm in a great place in my life, and I decide to take the vacation of a lifetime and go to Hawaii with some of my friends. So I'm sitting on the beach, watching the thousands of people surf and bodyboard and snorkel and do all of the things that you're supposed to do when you're in the Pacific Ocean. And I sat there frustrated and upset and really just unsettled that I couldn't do any of that stuff. I couldn't swim. I was afraid of water. So I had a choice. Much like I did in the hospital, I could either fake it and say, no thanks, guys. The salt water doesn't do it for me. I'll pass. Or I could be vulnerable and say, I'm afraid. And that's what I chose to do. And I expected some ridicule, maybe even rightfully so. I expected, what do you mean you can't swim? You're an adult. 
you can't swim? And instead I got, how can we help? How can we help you overcome this fear? So for the next two days, I tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed over and over and over again to put my face below water with a snorkel mask on. And finally, by the end of the second day, I was able to do it with my friend's help. All of this was in preparation for what was to happen next. So on the third day, I woke up early before dawn and drove to a port on the north shore of Oahu. And I took a boat ride. It was the most beautiful scene I've ever encountered. The sun was just rising above the ocean. The water was the most pristine blue color I've ever seen, as you can see in the photo. The boat rose and fell heavy with every single wave I came across. It was beautiful. And when we got to the destination, I was paralyzed with fear. I couldn't breathe. I could barely see. And I tried to stand up, and my legs buckled from underneath of me, falling backward into my seat. The only thought I could process was, I can't do this. And I looked at my best friend sitting at my left and said, I can't do this. And he looked back at me and said, yes, you can. You can do this. I didn't think I could do what happened next. And it still somewhat amazes me today. But I jumped into this cage. (laughs) This is an open top cage several miles from shore in the Pacific Ocean surrounded by roughly two dozen sharks that are hungry from the blood that's being dumped into the water in the back of the boat. (laughs) When I jumped into the water, two things happened. First, I hyperventilated for the very first time. (laughs) And second, I filled my snorkel mask with snot and seawater. (laughs) But I held on for dear life to the side of that cage and found out what white knuckle tight meant. And after several minutes, without thinking, I let go. And for one of the first times in my life, I was floating in water in the Pacific Ocean, surrounded by sharks. In Brene Brown's 2010 TED Talk on the power of vulnerability, she spoke of her research and that she found what underpins shame, fear, is vulnerability. That by being vulnerable, you can overcome the shame of being depressed or suicidal. You can overcome the fear of telling someone or asking for help. In my experience of being vulnerable over and over and over again, in big ways, like the emergency room, like the shark cage, and smaller everyday challenges, I found that you build up courage Something presents itself to you as a challenge or opportunity, you have this courage built up from being vulnerable. For example, I quit my job, that job that you're supposed to have when you graduate college, and took a 50% pay cut and gave up all the benefits and retirement plan and suit to work every day so that I could do something I'm passionate and excited about when I wake up every single day. So I ask you this, what are you afraid of out there? What are you afraid of in here? And will you be vulnerable for the sole purpose to learn how to swim?